I was in the studio and um, we went to get some food downstairs at the chicken shop and I had a guitar with me, it was random. And um, you know what happens when people have a guitar, they're like, oh, so give us a song, you know, when people see you with that. And so um, the guy said that he would give me a free, a free chicken if I sang him a song. So as you would, because chicken, I love chicken, so yeah, I sang him a song. And I was thinking, oh, you know what, I'd probably go around all the chicken shops singing songs and getting free chicken. And then that's really, to be fair, how it kind of, the idea kind of popped in my head to go around performing in random locations and then it just kind of developed from there, you know? Mm. And I thought, you know what, if I'm going to do something stupid like this, I might as well just make it worthwhile, you know, do it for charity and stuff. And, I mean, it's, it's no easy feat, 20, 24, yeah. 24 gigs, it's, 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 what was it, one every hour was it? Was that the idea? Yeah, it was one every hour, the gigs were like, uh, average like 15 minute set. And it was myself, I had, you know, two musicians with me, uh, Jamie and Matt, guitarist and a cajon player. Yeah. Yeah, so we just went round just performing at random locations and stuff, which was good though, because the, the crowd was really responsive. I was going to say, throughout, obviously throughout the night, and, yeah. and how, how was the people turn up? Did you have fans throughout the night who were supporting you? Were they the ones who kind of helped motivate you a little bit as well? Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, we started off at the London Eye, which was cool, so we had a big, like, one of them pods by ourselves, so that was full up of people that, you know, came down to, to support, and obviously they couldn't escape, you yeah. know, so which was good, so I was able to hammer them yeah. with tracks <laughs> and performances, and then, um, you know, I think nearer the time, around 4 o'clock, between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., it's one of those situations where most people are in bed, so we had to, we, we obviously set out to do gigs in, like, the meat market mm. in uh, East London, where, you know, this, oh, my phone's popping up. See, I should have turned my phone, that's probably my psychiatrist <laughs> coming, getting back to me with the result. Hold on. Yo, can I flat? Bro, can I, can I just call you back? I'm just in the middle of an um, interview at the moment. Yeah? All right, mate. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye. I should turn this off, what was I thinking? Highly unprofessional. <laughs> All right, here we go. What was I saying? You're talking about the meat, the meat. Yeah, so we did, we did a, we did a gig. It's about 5 a.m. at the meat market. It's, I think it's Spitalfields, I think. Mm. So we had like um, all these like, what are they call the meat guys? What uh, are they call them? Butchers. butchers that's yeah, it. yeah. I haven't recovered. So you have all these butch, the butcher guys, early in the morning, just cutting up the meat and all that stuff. So you know. We rolled up there and I was thinking, gosh, you know, I don't know if these guys are ready for it. I don't want to start singing their high songs or because someone might throw a lamb chop in my face, <laughs> you know. So um, we went, we rocked up there, set up the stage and everything. And it was great, though. I mean, they actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I think they probably needed that sort of boost in the morning. Um, and equally so did you probably at that yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, what, what was the one moment that you'd say... Um, to find it or, or you said to yourself this was definitely worth it this was definitely worth such a, a mad idea yeah I think um, def there, was, was, there was two actual moments um, I think the first one was the response from you know all, all the support from online like on the Twitter aspect of things um, the support was fantastic with that and I think that was a good moment when I was able to read the, tw the tweets as I was going on, like at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., you know, people were still saying, oh, you know, gearing me on and all that stuff. So that was cool with that. And then um, I think the, the, the final gig, when um, for me it was like the finishing line, you know, where I had a full band, I had my horn section, I had, you know, it was a, a nine piece band I had, you know, and yeah. we were able to just do a great show. It's jam, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess how the fans take into you as a solo, solo artist and solo career, obviously being part of the streets and, and give me a bit of a comparison of, of, of how they've been since you, you've left the streets. Um, I think the support I've had, you know, it's, pr it's, it's pretty much been similar. You know, I, I get a lot of people um, that, you know, tweet me, you know, p positive uh, feedback and I've not really been, I've not really been as active since leaving the streets with my own solo stuff mm. or, um, but from when I started started doing it now the response has been great you know they've 
they've kind of taken to me, you know. Um, yeah. Well, even though the sound is, it's not necessarily, it's like the streets. It's a, it's, it's a different sound, you know. What, 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 can you describe, like, in a sentence or two, like, this, you, your staple, like, what is your sound? What would you say, if anyone was to turn on and listen to you, what would you yeah, say? Um, yeah, so what, my sound is pretty much, I like a lot of percussive sounds, you know, a lot of uh, bongos, a lot of uh, tribally, uh, it's got a lot of tribally influences, you know. And um, I think when you when you when you uh, listen to the album or the EP, you'd be hearing a lot of, you know, R and B songs, pop songs, but with that, you know, tribally, you know, uh, edge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, just very everything's very percussive, you know, very, and a lot of chanting as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm into this chanting thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so into like chanting and beatboxing and you know trying to make as m many stupid noises with your mouth yeah. i guess who would you like to collaborate then given the opportunity in kind of an ideal world who would you like to think right i would like to get into a studio with that person um i'm a huge huge fan massive fan of coldplay yeah huge fan of coldplay you know i'm s such a big fan of coldplay that i actually dedicated a song to be fair, I actually ripped one, ripped one of their songs, yeah. remixed one of their songs, and did my own version. Yeah. Um, video was mad. I had like a camera stuck on my head, so it was like a POV sort of video shoot, which is fantastic. But um, yeah, so Chris Martin would be would be one definitely. Um, you know, Michael Jackson's gone now. James Brown's gone now, and those are my two main yeah. main guys. Um, I mean, Chris Martin's a good one. I mean, yeah, Chris Martin's a good one. I mean, the thing is, yeah, because. With 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 uh with Coldplay, I just love their melodies. Yeah. You know, I just love their hooks, and yeah, just everything everything they do, I love. Um, and what's next for you then? I mean, you've done a bit of acting. Yeah. You've uh, you creative director of a, a, t a tech company. Yeah, like um, a mo yeah mobile app company, celebrity uh, app company. Yeah. Um, and you you obviously your music. Yeah. I mean, what, what's what's next? Where's where's this career going? Well, really, I what I really want to do is and this is probably one of the main reasons why i'm doing this interview because I, I hope that you can take this tape and show it to martin scorsese right okay you know, because yeah. Yeah, i'm trying to get my denzel popping off yeah you know i'm trying to be the next idris elba up in here you know and it's and, looking good so far like. yeah you know so uh that's pretty much what i want to do go to hollywood you know see if i can call tom cruise see yeah. what he's saying yeah. See if you can bring me in. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> um, yeah. So that seems like the kind of future, and that's where you want. That's the kind of pinnacle. What about short term? What about this year? What's what? This you... year, this year, I've got the album to 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 put out. Um, I've, I want to, you know, take my band out on on tour. Um, you know, my, I've got a fantastic group of guys. You know, we've got horn section. Um, and it's just powerful, you know, the, with, with that whole loud, percussive, you know, sort of sound that I'll be bringing, and the whole performance element that I and ideas I have, stage ideas that I want to show people. So I'm looking forward to, to trying to do that this year as well. Leo, thank you very much. Cool, thank you. <laughs>